Let's look at the cumulative distribution for Gaussian, this cumulative distribution function for Gaussian random variable. What you see in the side is different Gaussian random variables with different mean and variances. If we want to find the distribution function, remember the relation, the CDF is the integral, capital F is the integral of the PDF. So we integrate from minus infinity to x, and then we have a dummy variable zeta or eta or whatever variable you would like to get. It's just a dummy variable is going to be, it's going to disappear when we substitute. Now performing the integration, I'm substituting for the PDF of Gaussian. This is the general formula. I just put the PDF for the Gaussian. Instead of x, we have zeta. And then we, are in, we have to integrate. Now, unfortunately, there is no closed form, there is no known closed form expression or solution for this integration. So how do you find the CDF? Either by numerical approximation, we use tables, we use MATLAB, there are already functions to approximate this. But I cannot write this as an expression, closed form solution. Now, if you want, there are some general, um, we need, to have, we need to have a table for every AX and sigma X. There is one important value we would like to know. Which is, what, is the va what is the value of the CDF at X equal to AX? At this specific value, if you substitute, then integration becomes simple because if you put zeta equal to, if you put X here equal to AX, you are basically integrating up to half the area. So the answer is, is expected to be 0.5. If you are interested to find uh, the CDF at the mean, then it's very well known. So at times we get questions, we don't have the table, we, ha we don't have the MATLAB. When they are asked to find the CDF at the mean, the CDF at the mean is always going to be for Gaussian, for symmetric distribution, it's going to be 0.5. So there is no need for table, there is no need for calculator. Okay, so the lower sketch here is the associated CDF for all the above PDFs. The blue goes with the blue, you can see that the CDF start from zero, and it, it peaks at one, and it continues like this. Based on the, on the spread, you can see the curve become gradual. If we have less spread, the curve jumps from zero to one in a shorter uh, duration. And uh, you can compare, you can miss, you can compare the PDF with the associated CDF. This is how the CDF would look like. Now we, we still have the problem of calculating the CDF. To evaluate the CDF numerically for a given x, for a given value of x, then what we can do, we need sigma x squared, we need the variance, we need sigma, and we need a, x, we need the mean. Now, example, if we put uh, sigma equal to 3, sigma x squared equal to 3, and ax equal to 5, then we do the substitution. We can use, uh, we can construct a table for those specific values, and then we try different values of x. We have fixed ax and sigma, and then we can try x equal to minus 20, and so on, until we get the entire table filled. So we start one at a time, evaluate numerically, and we get the answer for at plus 6, and so on, and so forth. But this is not comfortable, because the table has uh, going to be, is going to be infinite number of tables. As you change sigma and x, you get another different table. So it's not going to be a very convenient way of solving the problem. The problem summarized, we will get a table for various values of x. The table will only work for Gaussian with sigma x squared equal to 3 and x equal to 5. Since we have infinite number of solutions, or an infinite number of scenarios, this is not a good solution. We got an uh, uncountable infinite number of tables to be constructed, so we need to find a solution which is going to be using the standard or um, the standard CDF. Let's see. Let's define the normalized CDF, which is going to solve the problem. The normalized CDF, remember that um, what we want to do is to find the general distribution function, f sub x of x, this is the CDF, for any Gaussian with any sigma x of x. And instead of doing so, we can use the normalized distribution. Normalized is the same CDF, but except that we are looking at the normalized case, the standard normal, where we have x equal to zero, and the variance sigma x equal, and the standard deviation equal to one. 
if you substitute this expression what you get is the following uh, integral so instead of solving the general form I'm going to solve only this one notes here in the notation f sub x represent the general distribution while without x is the normalized CDF it's the normalized one the, the standard notation so these don't get confused now um, how are they related are they related and how are they related if you use uh, if you compare these two expression by doing change of variable zeta minus sigma minus ax over sigma x equal to um, equal to uh, mu or u and do the, the, the integration do the change of variable then this is going to replace this expression dz equal to du the integral will change x now okay x is going to be uh, different it's going to be the following expression so uh, by doing the change of variable we found out that there is a direct relation f sub x the general form equal to the normalized one but except it's evaluated instead of x it's evaluated at x minus ax over sigma x so we have the following fundamental relation I'm going to write this in a bracket here so you don't forget if somebody wants to find the CDF in general and what you have is that standard normal or the normalized CDF then what you need to do is subtract the mean and divide by the, the sigma x and you get your expression here is an example of a tabulated normalized CDF this is for the values of uh, f of x between 0 and 3.89 why this specific number because you can see after this number we almost get one so the CDF is almost one so there is no need with even four digits of course it's not going to be one ideally until you go to infinity but given the accuracy we have four digits uh, four decimal numbers that it's it's already 3.89 is already one and this table is in steps of 0.01 so if you start this is the value of x 0 0.00 and this is the second digit so if you want 0.11 you go from 0.1 from here or one from here it becomes 0.11 and you get the value 0.5 remember that at 0 you get 0.5 because in standard normal it's symmetric around 0 so you expect the answer to be 0.5 all those numbers are more than 0.5 if you want the CDF for values less than 0 in the negative side then you can use the symmetry property to find out we'll do that through examples Here is an example for evaluating the Gaussian CDF. We'll start with an easy example. It says a Gaussian random variable x with ax equal to 3 mean and the spread sigma x equal to 2. Evaluate the probability of x less than or equal to 5.5. Evaluate the probability of x less than or equal to 5.5 is equivalent to asking for the CDF. So here he's asking for the CDF of this random variable up to the value x which is given to be 5.5 remember this is the normal normalize I need first to normalize this so finding the CDF the normalized at 5.5 is equivalent to finding the normalized CDF but we have to subtract the mean divide by the spread so 5.5 minus 3 this is given in the question divide by 2 as if you need to five to need to find uh, f of 0.25 how do you find this we need to find use the table let's get the table back I need to evaluate the table at 1.25 so we have 1.2 here and this second digit will be get we get from here so if you look at the crossing here we have 0 0.8944 0 0.05 so this is the intersection and we get 0 0.8944 0 0.8944 this is how we got the solution We'll look at more uh, advanced examples as we go the second example says okay uh, it says the following the height of the clouds above the ground is Gaussian so if this is the height if this is the height of the cloud is Gaussian assumingly it's this is not a Gaussian shape but assuming it's Gaussian which means at certain height there's there is lots of clouds as you go away from this height up or down you get less clouds so height of the cloud above the ground is Gaussian random variable x with the mean is 1830 meters and sigma is um, 460 meters not the unit for sigma and, and x are the same okay. 
So we have meters here in both cases. So what's required? It's saying, what is the probability that a pilot using his airplane will find clouds above this given number, 2750? It says, what is the probability that x is greater than 2750? What's the probability that they're going to have a cloud above this height? So first, we need to write the right expression. Probability of x is greater than 2750. It's equivalent to 1 minus the complement less than or equal. Okay, this is what we know, what we call the CDF. This is not the CDF. This is the complement of the CDF. So we have 1 minus this quantity. So why not 1 minus f of x? Uh, as you can guess, the next step will be 2 normalize. So we get 1 minus f. 2750 minus the mean, this is given the question, 460 is the standard deviation, is the, uh, is the sigma spread. And we, if we subtract, divide, you get 2. Again, using the table, we find that at 2, we get 0.9772, and then 1 minus that could give you 0.022. So there is less than 2% probability that uh, you're going to get a cloud above that height. 2.28. To be more accurate. Now, uh, before we conclude, I would like just to share with you that uh, we we have something called Q approximation. The mathematicians using uh, are using uh, the following equation, okay, which is uh, one over two by integration from x to infinity. If you compare it with our normalized function, and if you look at the colored uh, limits here, everything looks the same except for the fact that the limits are are uh, inverse. If you know that the entire area is one. So you can tell that the relation between the function, the normalized function that we know, and the one that's used by the mathematicians, the Q function, is 1 minus. So the reason is that the mathematicians, they have lots of approximations, lots of work, so we can utilize their Q function without um, harm by just knowing the relation. So there is no closed form, again, expression for X, for Q, as expected, because they are just complement. And now we can we can um, use some approximations. For example, this is one of the approximation. The Q function can be approximated with the following expression, where A, B are just constant. X is the value that you want to calculate. So the beauty about this is that there is a closed form expression. It's not exact. It's just approximation. It says for positive value of X only, and A is 0.339, B is 5.1. These are constant. You just substitute. And you just uh, get the value of x, you get your answer. As I mentioned, if you want to get it for negative q, for, for negative x, you have to understand uh, the symmetry, and then it's going to be 1 minus the positive number, q of the positive number. All right, so now the error for using this q function is uh, less than 0.27%. If you like this approximation, then you don't need to use tables. You can just plug in the formula. Let's use this acute approximation to redo the example. Uh, a Gaussian random variable with the following mean and variance. It says find the probability of x less than or equal to 7.3. This is like saying find the CDF. And it's going to be 7.3 minus the mean. We're normalizing here. It's f of 0.6. And it's 1 minus x or q of 0.6. And basically now we use the expression. I just put the numbers. Apply. This, there's not much here theory. We're just plugging in the numbers, and we get the answer. So if you plug all the numbers, you get uh, 0.7264. And if you go back to the table, you'll find it's 0.7257. Okay, not exact, but maybe good enough. It depends on the application. So this is a quick use of the Q function. If you are going to use MATLAB, there are ready functions for the Q functions, for the for lots of uh, functions that you can use and find the answer immediately. So the error in this scenario is just point. If you subtract and divide by the correct answer, you'll find that the error is 0.096%. It's a relatively small number. The MATLAB function is 1 minus Q function. There's something called Q function, Q func. So uh, this is the, the MATLAB function. If you want our uh, normalized answer, you get 1 minus Q function, and that's going to be 0.725. Of course, this is like the one in the table, the exact answer. Thank you for watching. Now, if you have any question or comment, please write in the comment section. We'll be happy to answer.